In this, this video will show you different sonar images from the deeper and explain how to identify structures on the seabed and distinguish different types of bottom. I'm Martin from thefishfinders.com, and as always, we provide a neutral voiceover. Here we go. Underwater humps can be found near the shore as well as in open waters. They are not only very attractive for predators that hunt in open water. Let us remember. If we look from above on a lake, it is difficult to estimate where the fish are at the moment. This is where underwater humps come in handy. These are the first places we can use for orientation. They are often a hotspot for many fishes, either bait fishes or predatory fishes. Especially for sit and wait predators, they are well suited for hunting prey. Predators often rest in the lower part of these mountains and come up to feed in the areas covered with plants. Through this behavior they have very short distances from their resting place to the hunting ground. This means that we have to somehow activate the resting or digesting predators down there if we want to fish them. Up here, the already active pike perch are attracted to feed. There are enough small prey fish. It is much more likely that predators bite during an active feeding phase. Unfortunately, these phases are very short so, as anglers, we have to watch out for them. Depending on the weather or how murky the water is, this active phase can be during the day, at dusk or at night. If we have a sunny day and clouds suddenly darken the sky, this can trigger a hunting impulse. Most night predators start hunting at dusk, as their eyes are well adapted to poor visibility conditions. This nighttime hunting can be observed especially in clear waters. Predators with good eyes wait for an advantage over their prey. It is an unwritten law in the animal kingdom that most predators do not want to waste energy. This means that the prey must bring in more energy than the energy spent during the hunt. The instincts of the predator fish provide the pulse stimulus for hunting. Simulating an easy prey at the right time gives the best chances of catching a big fish. Underwater humps are always a hot spot. This is something to keep in mind and simply fish at the drop-offs. Let us now take a closer look at structures on the bottom. Finding them means finding fish. Many predators often stay close to structures on the bottom. This is especially the case with strong currents such as in rivers. We know that the flow velocity is much lower near the bottom than in midwater. And structures on the bottom reduce the flow velocity even more. How can we detect structures with the deeper? On this picture we are viewing the deeper from above. On the ground are tree trunks, branches as well as small and large stones. Now on the right side we see the matching picture of the deeper. There we identify a fish arch, and at the bottom we see a small hump with plants on top. But why can we not see the stones? They are there and they should produce a strong echo. To explain this, we have to imagine this 50 square meters or 500 square foot flat again. When the stones are lying in the kitchen and the sound from the deeper reaches the floor. What should the deeper show us? Should it show us the average depth of the whole flat? Or should it show the small humps that are in the kitchen as depth? The answer is very simple. The strongest signal is shown to us as being the bottom. If the stones are too small, they are not shown at all. If there are only a few larger stones in the living room for example, the software decides whether and how the echo of these stones is displayed. This means that although we can see these structures and plants below here, if other structures on the bottom are too small, the software ignores them and they are not displayed. This is especially the case if they are not interpreted as plants. And if we take a closer look at these structures, they might be stones or a hard, solid bottom with lots of diversity for prey fish and predators such as perch, bass and pike perch. Alternatively, there might be a lot of sand underneath the deeper with little vegetation. However, it is important to know that we do not see both types of structures on the fish finder image of the deeper. A fish finder cannot distinguish between structures. Therefore, it is not possible to show a 3D underwater view as a 2D image on the display. The following is what we see on an image from a fish finder. A hard, stony ground produces a strong echo. This means that if we now switch to the day view of the deeper, we will have a very clear indication of a hard surface. We see a nice bright yellow as a strong bottom echo. 
We can identify some fish arches above the ground in here as well. At this point we can see a very weak echo from the bottom. It is represented as a slightly yellow line, not so thick. At this point the yellow is completely missing. This image from the deeper shows us that the bottom produces a strong echo. In other words, the bottom consists of dense sand, clay or many stones. Even several smaller stones or a few larger stones can create a yellow bottom line. On the other hand, it is also possible that the area is full of rocks. It should be clear to us that our interpretation of this line is just an assumption. Should they be boulders, then we will not see a wave-like bottom line. Only a bright yellow bottom line indicates that we could have a really nice structure here. We do not need to see fish arches for it to be considered a hot spot. The following picture makes it even clearer that we do not always see what is within the bottom structure. Fish hide behind or between stones. This happens very often especially at drop-offs, because a lot of boulders accumulate there. These structures hide fish, and even if we have a super interesting fish finder image, we might not see any fish arch. Most fish finder owners think too often that there is nothing when there are no fish arches on images. However, the fish are hiding underneath in the structure. Sometimes, it is not easy to tell if the spot is really good. We have to interpret the images correctly or develop a basic understanding of how fish finder images are created. In many cases, it is still worth fishing there, even if there is no fish to be seen at first sight.